So if you are joining me, make sure that you comment with the name of your company below so we can find out who is um, watching the video. And if you're watching the replay, comment replay. So I've been having conversations with my friends lately that are all in direct sales. And we've been talking about how to succeed in a pretty difficult business without alienating all of your friends. Um, it's, a, it's a tough gig because direct sales requires you to get out and network. That's why it's called network marketing. Um, it's a person-to-person -person sort of business, so it forces you to get out of your shell, get out of your house, and to figure out how to make connections with people. But how do you do that without annoying your friends and getting them to block you on all of your social media because you're being annoying? So I'm going to show you guys and talk about the 10 commandments on how to rock your direct sales business without losing all of your friends. So um, if you're joining me, make sure that you comment with your company below. And I'm going to make sure that I can see comments. So at least I can see comments. So one thing that um, I want to mention to people is that we all know that guy, um, that person who has recently started a brand new business, whichever one it happens to be, and they cannot stop talking about it. They basically are constantly spamming their timelines or their friends in PMs. Remember, make sure you comment with the name of the company. Any comment uh, about their new business? So. The biggest, most important rule that you're going to find out of this entire video is no verbal vomit, which basically is hard to do because when you're first starting your business, you're so excited about it. You want everyone you know to be excited about your new business, so you can't stop talking about it. You need to dial it back because people are not as excited about it as you are. So you need to figure out how to calm yourself down and plan how you're going to share your business. So the plan is a pretty big deal. Hey, Laura, how are you? How's the Jamboree life these days? So one of the biggest things about network marketing that's really hard for people is that it's not about the sale. It's not about that one sale you're going to make. Because to sustain your business, you need to have repeat sales. And repeat sales require you to, number two, build relationships. So building relationships is really, really important in this business because a single sale is not going to help you grow your business. And building relationships helps you and to connect with your customers and it fosters a sense of trust between you and them. So if you're taking the time to go out and build relationships, create friendships with the people that are actually part of your, um, your customer base, then they're not just customers. They, they become your friends. Um, and especially with the advent of social media, you're seeing their posts on their timelines and you're learning about their families and their backgrounds. If you're taking the time to build a relationship and not have every person be a one-time sale, your business is going to be better off in the long run. Trust me. So you want to make sure that you're talking about building relationships. And how do you do that? Well, for me, it's creating a group. So when you create a VIP group, um, it's really important that your friends have a place to connect with each other. So people are talking to each other about your product. You are showing that you're not just trying to sell them stuff, so make sure that all of your posts aren't about your business. Nobody wants to be that guy. Nobody wants to hang around with that guy, and nobody wants to see that guy in their timeline. So if you are spending all of your time posting about your business, day in and day out, you're going to be blocked. And that is the worst possible thing for somebody who is in direct sales. So you need to start thinking about how to connect with people, post about your life, be a real person, okay? Um, they want to see what's about you. They don't necessarily want just a face in front of a company. So build relationships, whether it be in VIP groups, whether it be one-on-one, -on -one, whether it be um, in person over coffee. The car should get out of your house. So it's not about the sale. Repeat that to yourself constantly. It's not about the sale. Okay, so that's my second commandment. The third commandment, and there's only 10, I swear. This is going to be a relatively quick video. Know your customer base. So this is like kind of important because if you are selling, for me, for example, if you're selling lip sums, you're probably not going to be marketing to guys, and you're probably not going to be marketing to people who never wear makeup. 
Well, actually, I do market to people who never wear makeup because you never know. They might start wearing makeup. And if it's easy, then they might. But the idea is you need to spend time thinking about it. So who do you want to connect with? Who do you know in your friends list that may be interested in what you do? So kind of start thinking about that. And then that's this is the part where you start um, making lists of people that you know. So your friends list, your people that might be interested in business, think about your customer base. Okay. So that's deep. There's only seven left, so it's quick. Plan your launch. So you think this is kind of a no-brainer, but when people start um, their business, they kind of are caught up in how exciting, how excited they feel about their business, on how um, how much they want all of their friends to be super excited about their business. But you need to dial it back and figure out the steps on how to launch your business so it's most effective because you want to think of ways on how to channel the interest that you get in your business when you first post about it. So think about how you are going to funnel all those um, new people that are showing interest into a VIP group so that you can show them more information about the product without spamming a timeline about it. Um, this is something that your upline should help you with. In any direct sales business, regardless of whether you're selling Norwex, you're selling LipSense, or you're doing Tupperware, um, hopefully, your upline should have more experience than you do, and they should be able to help guide you through getting your business launched. Um, this is kind of important, especially if you have a downline yourself. You need to be thinking about how to help your downline plan and get their business started. Hey, Jennifer, how are you? So, plan your launch. Take the time to map it out. I mean, it's a worthwhile exercise. Like, how are you going to announce it to your friends and family? Are you going to do an in-home party? or demo, or however you want to call it? Or are you going to do it exclusively online? So if you have those things thought out ahead of time, it makes executing it a lot easier. All right, be the expert. So this is kind of important. So if you are selling any new product, direct sales, you need to make sure that you know your product because they're gonna ask you questions inevitably, whether you are selling Jamboree, whether you are selling LipSense, or you're selling Mary Kay, you need to know what you're talking about. So take the time to read your product knowledge stuff that you get when you sign up. Um, it makes a difference. It's worthwhile time to do because if you don't know the answers to most questions, it's going to show. So take the time to do your homework. Read up on your product. All right, only five left. This is kind of quick. Okay, so this is a pretty important one too. So number six commandment, plan to get out of your warm market. So your warm market is your friends and family. Um, anytime that you start a new business, you're going to connect with your friends and family first. And the tough part is that your friends and family are not going to sustain or grow your business. So what's kind of important to keep in mind is that your friends and family probably have a three to four month window of helping you out. You know, you can, I mean, and this goes for people who like join every single business out there. They're going to know that, you know, they can bug their friends and family for about three months and then they're done with your stuff. They've already bought enough wraps from you, they've already bought enough lipstick from you, whatever you're selling, they're done after about three months. So if you don't go into your business thinking about how you're gonna get out of your cold market, your business will die. It, that's just how it happens. It's just gonna die. You're gonna be stuck not being able to get any sales, you're, not, you're stuck not being able to get any parties, and it's because you haven't thought about how you are gonna start selling to strangers. So whether you join a book club, or you join a professional networking group, or you go on meetup to find new people, you need to think, or do vendor events. Vendor events are a great way to do it too. You need to think about how you are getting out of your warm market. If you don't start planning how you're gonna get into your cold market, those three or four months are gonna come around and you're gonna be stuck with no business. And then you're gonna freak out and then you're gonna be like, oh, this is awful, so hard, I'm just gonna quit. So go into the business thinking about how to get out of your warm market. Super important tip. All right, so vendor events are great. There are tons of Facebook groups on um, available that show you vendor events that are local to you. Um, you can check it out on um, local business pages. Ask your um, chamber of commerce. Sometimes they have stuff like that too. Okay, number seven. So this is super, super important, and it's so, so hard to figure out how to finesse this because don't be salesy. But you're trying to make sales, right? So how do you go about selling your product without being a salesman. There's a couple things to think about. So you wanna make sure that 
one, you're not constantly talking about your product, but you're a product of your product, so you're wearing it. Maybe it's incidental in the um, posts that you have or the videos that you do, um, but don't be that guy, okay? We all know that guy who the only time they ever reach out to you is when they want you to buy stuff. These are the people that contact you at the end of the month and are trying to make their numbers, and the only reason they're PMing you is they're trying to make sales to hit a certain goal. I hate that. That drives me crazy because I know it's super disingenuous. And as a result, I don't want to talk to those people because they're being salesy and it's annoying. And you don't want to be just a dollar sign. And you don't want your customers to feel like you only look at them as a dollar sign. So I know it's hard to pull that back. I know it's really tough, especially when you're trying to hit a specific goal and you're close. But don't be that guy. Okay? Don't do it. Um, it'll hurt your business in the long run. You'll be categorized as one of those people that people want to avoid, and they don't want that to just, you know, totally mess up your business. Don't be salesy. Um, and I know it's kind of hard to define, but it's, I mean, it's really the guy that, you know, the only reason they ever reach out to you, like the person that hasn't talked to you in 17 years, and the first thing that they PM you about is this amazing opportunity that they want to talk to you about. Don't do that. Okay. There's only two more. Almost done. And I kind of just threw this together because I know that so many people on my um, Facebook friends list are in direct sales. I've met them through my time at Jamberry or I've met them through vendor events and I've friended them. And it's something that universally you really want to, um, to learn if you're in network marketing or direct sales in general. Because you do want to make a living. I mean, everybody's in this to make money for their family and stuff. But you want to do it in a respectful manner. Okay, so number eight, be respectful. So this is really important. And it kind of goes with the whole concept of be, not being salesy. So all of the people on your friends list, be respectful of them. Um, and the example I want to bring up is that I've had people on my friends list who have tried to mine my friends list for their business. So they went through my friends list, which at the time was publicly visible, and started PMing them about their business. They did not have any direct connection with these people. They just wanted to mine my friends list for their business, which really ticked me off um, because it's, it's not respectful. The, that person had not shown initial interest in it. You're, you're, cold, you're reaching out as a cold call, and we all hate spammers. So don't do that. Really, I'm just totally serious. Do not do that. It's awful, um, and people hate it. People will not like you. Don't do it. All right. Two more. Almost done. So this is important. Okay. So if you have ever um, had somebody say no to you and you felt terrible about it, it's okay. Remind yourself that not every product is for every person. And that's all right. I mean, not everybody is going to want to buy lip scents or buy makeup or skincare or anything like that that I sell. And that is okay. Not every product is going to connect with every person. But you do not want to take that sort of a no personally. Um, I know that hearing no and that hearing a lot of no's can be really tough on your ego. And you can be really, really discouraged in your business. But move on. So the way that I equate it is that it's kind of like going to a wedding and somebody offering you wedding cake or you're the person offering wedding cake, and you're like, would you like a piece of cake? And that other person is saying, no, nah, I don't really like cake, I'm on a diet, blah, blah, blah. What do you do? You move on to the next person. Would you like a piece of cake? And they're like, oh, I'm totally gluten intolerant, can't do it. Okay, that's okay. It's not that they hate me, they just don't want a piece of cake. And it's the exact same thing for drug sales. So you're gonna have to talk to a lot of people that tell you no before you get to the person that says yes. So if you get discouraged by the first person that tells you no, you're going to be done because a lot of people are going to say no and that's okay that's the nature of the business so don't take it personally so try to figure out a way to get over it and it's tough i understand that all right so this is another one get out of your comfort zone so one of the things about direct sales is that um it is there's a reason why they call it network marketing you have to go out and network I mean, whether it's in person, you know, going out and trying to get parties or you're doing vendor events to try to meet new people and spread 
um, knowledge about your product out there. Um, it might not be something you're used to. If you're a homebody or if you're somebody who's not terribly social, this is a tough thing to do. But you got to do it. I mean, if you don't do stuff that's going to be kind of out of your comfort zone, then you're going to have a really hard time growing your business. And that's one of those things that you can't get around. So I hope you guys got some things out of this. Um, feel free to comment below, like, or send me some hearts if you, um, if you found any value out of it. And I hope you guys had a great weekend.